all, and I hope that you're ready for a wonderful time, lots of engagement. We're going to be thinking about these works, um, and I hope that you're ready to, I guess, really enjoy this time. Uh, it's the start of the holiday season, so let this be a part of that merriment. I think I will quickly turn over to the, the head of the Department of Literatures and English, Dr. Rachelle Mosley Wood, who will also, also bring some greetings here tonight, and then we're going to enjoy some more musical accompaniment. Dr. Mosley Wood. Thank you, Dr. Simacho. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Opal and everyone, Mervyn. You know, I've noticed that at, at our gatherings on you, we come out and we say, um, you know, all, what is it? all our comments are observed, and we insist on Professor and Sir. So we're family, we're home. This is Christmas, and we're going to relax and enjoy. So welcome, everybody. Everybody is an important and very special guest. Yes. So, well, thanks for coming, everybody. We know that you must have battled some traffic uh, to get up here, and we're very glad to see you. Um, and I want to say this is our, it's late in the semester, but this is our first, I think, face-to-face -face event for the semester. Um, We've had some last year, but this is our first for the semester. And we are getting back into the group and really happy to see you face to face again. Um, you know, online is great, but face to face is great. So let's see faces and, and respond. Um, so it's, it's, you know, we're moving slowly back into that group, but we're getting there. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you and to say thank you to Opal for allowing us to host this event for her um, three books. That's an achievement, as, you know, and in such a, a short space of time as well to have them published so quickly one after the other. That's a real achievement, and we are really honored and very pleased to pay tribute to this formidable talent that is Opal. Uh, so thank you all for um, We invite you to relax, to enjoy all of the items on the program. It promises to be a real treat, uh, and I'm sure you will enjoy. And as Isis has said, uh, you know, this is our start, our launch to the Christmas season, December 1st. So, so enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. This is crazy. First days are so comfortable, right? Um, so something I just like to say is, yes, this is a gift of words, and we are here to celebrate Opal, um, in particular these three works, The Storyteller's Return, Portia Dreams, and A Hundred Plus Voices for Miss Moon. So before we get into those, we're going to have a musical interview, um, where the performance of Charmaine Limoni Limonias. Limonias. Just the one song. But as we listen to this music, I also want you to think about rhythm, right? Rhythm matters a lot to Opal. You'll hear it in her works um, when we get to that portion of the program. But enjoy the music and let the rhythm move you. Here we have Charmaine.
church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands play the tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to fish you out a warning. She'd say, baby, don't you run so fast. You might fall on a piece of glass. There might be snakes there in that grass. Grandma's hands. Behind the belly button, where you've talked home to escape the crass talk and wild flying fists, you clutch the sacredness of home between your toes. Don't tarnish this space. Don't crumble these interactions. She's so young when mother. She used to take her face and tell her. Grandma baby understands that you really love that man. Just put yourself in Jesus' hands. Grandma's hands. Home is not a pointless compass. Bright, hopeful eyes of dance through this space. If you listen carefully, you will hear the giddy laughter dusted home clean. Grandma had a home. Grandma left her home. Grandma built her own home. Grandma counsel, sequester home in the dimples of your cheeks. And my grandma's hands used to give me bits of candy. Grandma's hands picked me up each time I fell by grandma's hands. Oh, they really came in handy, she'd say. Matty, don't you with that child. What do you want to thank her for? She didn't drop the book but I don't have grandma anymore. If I ever get to heaven, I know for grandma's name. Home is not a pointless compass. piece is called Days of Return 4. is not 
boys, how rich you are. Returning home, the storyteller decides these memories are zinc proof, leaking, warping the wooden floor that has been replaced with tiles. Both mother and father are dead now, and she honors them for planting her feet on this land and steering her home. Stop for a minute, count our blessings one by one. We must never be disloyal, but stand up and be strong. Our Jamaica is a beautiful island, the pearl of the Caribbean Sea. No oppression that you see, yes, our people they are free, the most beautiful women they be. And the hills and the valleys and the mountains and the rivers always make them to me. Scanning the landscape, she knows not even death will conclude this poem. Home will always remain unfinished. Home is a poem balanced on the hand of a drop. This is the land of my birth. This is the land of my birth. This is Jamaica, my Jamaica, the land of my birth. All right, just a little thing in between. The gift of word is love. Everything begins and resides in that space. And the storyteller's return is a gift to myself for coming home when I did before I was too feeble and dementia had set in and I was unable to contribute. So the gift of words that the storyteller is is a gift to all Jamaicans. It is a gift for us to find our center to honor that which is beautiful and enduring and African in us. To know that in our collective stories is justice and an endless tapestry of how much we have contributed to the world and the world. The stories tell us return is really a time for us to have a conversation with each other. And because we are an oral people, and we are a people from whom the griot tradition, the art of storytelling as historians is so important in recording the history of who we are and what we are. This collection of story poems is really a love poem to Jamaica and to myself and to wrap myself and to wrap myself in my Jamaica dance my way through and re-remember what I lived, what I invented, and what I carry on my back that is announced on the tip of my tongue and articulated in my walk and sung in my skin. What do you give someone you love who has already has everything, even if, though they might not be aware of it? I give them the storyteller's return in the hopes that they might see and recognize that enduring aspect of themselves that allow them to survive and to thrive and to create and to invent and incorporate all the talents into words that swishes with the breeze and responds to the bird's chatter. The gift of words of the storyteller is a really a memory band. It is a call to make soup. You know, you put a little bit of everything in there and then you have this amazing pepper pot soup that I love, which I don't make, but my mother used to make. And because she's dead now, maybe someone will make me pepper pot soup. <laughs> but that's really what it is when you think about, for me, pepper pot and all of the things that go into, you know, leftovers into making that. So I'm very happy to accept this notion of gifting.
But for me as a Jamaican writer, and I never separated my identity, all the places I've been have always been Jamaican. For me, this gift of creativity, um, of writing, was many years nurtured in the very soil um, and the fiber of Jamaica. And it has always reflected back the truth, uh, the subtleties, the nuances that I see, but also the rejection and the discrimination and self-hatred too. Yet despite all the crime and the corruption and all that is not right, what is also beautiful and meaningful and life-affirming and transformative is also evident in this space. I could not have written the storyteller's return anywhere else. In a sense, it is a retrieving of my navel string that was buried under an orange tree. A practice, unfortunately, that is no longer done. And it caused me to ponder if maybe that is why this generation feels so rootless and not really belonging. Jamaica gifted me language and Jamaica gifted me a specific way of seeing. So the storytellers return is also each of you who are part of who I am, is part of a memory bank and history. And how, does we, how do we fuse those parts of us together so we can continue to create a new paradigm, gifting each other's words, a language through which communication and intimacy interacts, rinse words to heal the scars of our history, and to fashion a ladder to scale even greater heights, I gift you the storyteller's return.